Hi, my name's Alistair Chapman, and in this video, I'd like to take a quite in-depth look at this device that I have here on the back of my PMW F5, and this is the Cinemartin Next. So, what is this device? Well, at first glance, uh, you see a screen on the back, and you see a live picture. If I move the camera, you can see that this is a live view from the uh, camera. So obviously it's a video monitor. We have SDI inputs and outputs here. In fact, what we have on the side here is we have two 6G HD SDI inputs. So the device can clearly take 4K input. And in fact, it can record 4K at up to 10 bit 444 RGB 30 frames per second uncompressed. So really incredibly high image quality. We can also do uh, high definition and even standard definition with this. And there's not many devices these days that can still record standard definition. You have two HDSDI outputs for feeding to a monitor. And right now I'm taking one of those HDSDI outputs and feeding it to my TV logic monitor here. So I have a nice uh, high quality monitor output as well. And then below this, you'll see another connector and this is a multi-pin breakout connector. And into this connector, I can plug in a multitude of other inputs and outputs. And those start with baseband composite standard definition video. And there really are very few devices that can still do that. And a lot of people still do use uh, composite video, especially very basic uh, location uh, live mixers and things like that. So being able to record that composite video input could be very useful for some people. It also gives you uh, S video input. It gives you component video input and separate XLR audio inputs and outputs. So one thing, maybe you're shooting something live. You might have your video coming in on the HD SDI and then your audio from, an, from a separate audio source, say a audio mixer at a concert or something like that coming in via a breakout cable onto this connector. So very flexible and versatile in terms of getting signals into the device. And then also via this connector, we can get component video out and composite output as well if we want. And one of the nice things that the unit can do is it can actually down convert. So we might have HD coming in and standard definition coming out live in real time and that is a nice feature to have. So very, very well connected, this device. If you only have HDMI, we have an HDMI input, and this is a 4K capable HDMI input, and then a 4K capable HDMI output as well. So we can feed cameras such as the Sony A7S or FS7 that only have 4K HDMI uh, in or out of this unit. And that's ideal for feeding to a consumer 4K TV for uh, HDMI 4K monitoring. So really, as I say, very well connected. But what about image quality? Well, on the left here, we see the XAVC recording magnified from the PMW F5. And then on the right, we have the uncompressed recording from the next. The compressed recordings have compression artifacts. You see a lot of extra noise and a bit of macro blocking. And that's perfectly normal with a compressed recording. But the next, on the other hand, is uncompressed. There are no compression artifacts. So it is a much higher quality image. And this is going to be particularly important if you're recording in log, where you're going to do a lot of grading in post-production. So uncompressed recording on the next really does offer excellent image quality. Now, as well as video recording, this device can do much, much more. 
Uh, right now, the application that I have open here is the next video capture application that comes with the unit and we can see a live feed. But if I close this application here, what you see is a quite familiar Windows home screen or desktop. And we have our taskbar and everything else because in fact, this is a very powerful computer. It's not just a video recorder, it's a full blown computer, very highly specified in terms of processors. We can go up to multi-core i7 processors up to 32 gigabytes of RAM and very, very fast solid state internal storage up to one terabyte. And those specifications actually exceed that of an awful lot of laptops, uh, high-end laptops. So very, very powerful computer. And you can use this as a workstation. In fact, there's no reason why this couldn't be your primary edit suite because it has the processing power to do that. Looking at the side of the unit very briefly, you'll see 3.5 millimeter jacks for audio in and audio out. There are four USB 3 connectors right here. Right now I've got a Bluetooth dongle in one of them and we'll see why I'm using that in a little bit. You can get much, much smaller Bluetooth dongles than this one. There are two Ethernet connections here for networking. So you can plug this in uh, to surf the net if you want, or more importantly, for uploading footage over the internet updating software and things like that. So very well connected network wise. And below that, we have two DisplayPort connectors. Now, why DisplayPort? Well, DisplayPort's really nice because with the correct cable, we can plug this DisplayPort output into either a DVI monitor or into an HDMI monitor. And in fact, because I have two, I could plug in two monitors directly into this. So if I was doing some editing, I could spread my display across two screens. So really super powerful computer, very well connected. But here's one of the big surprises. This thing only takes about 24, 28 watts, depending on the exact specification. So it's really very low powered. It actually uses quite a bit less power than many laptops. Right now, I'm running it off a simple DTAP adapter off my PAG battery here on the back of the camera. And with this battery, I'm going to get several hours, uh, maybe three, four hours of use uh, of this device. So really good battery life. And I don't need to carry extra batteries around. I can use the same batteries as I use for my camera kit. There are also low cost um, battery packs that you can get from this and Cine Martin will be able to advise you on how to power and how to use this device. In terms of price, well, it starts at around about 2000 euros going up to 4,000 euros. Now that may sound like a fairly large amount of money, but do consider that this can act as a video recorder out of the box. You don't need to add anything to it to be a video recorder. If you were trying to use a laptop, you'd have to get some sort of external input and output box with this device. It's built in. Um, also compared to a laptop, it is very powerful. You can plug in multiple monitors, well, there is no reason why you couldn't use this as the workstation for your main edit suite in your office. It is really that good in terms of processing power. So that's a basic overview of the unit. Let's take a look at some of the details. So the screen on the back here, this is a very bright, high brightness touch screen. Now, if you saw the other video that I've made about this unit where I shot outside, you'll see that even in daylight, this monitor is quite usable and quite viewable. And being a touch screen, we can completely control the unit from here. So if I go back into the, the live application here, you'll see I now have my live feed from the camera um, and I can set up my different recording formats here. And if we take a look at those, we have all kinds of different formats available, uh, starting with standard definition, 8-bit 422 recording and going all the way up to 4K, 444, 10-bit RGB, really incredibly high image quality. If I come out of this application and go into another application here, this one, LT, this particular application is a background transcoding application. Now, this is a very useful tool. So we're able, as we've seen, to record uncompressed with this recorder, really high quality. But very often, 
you'll need smaller files than uncompressed. Uncompressed files are fairly large. So this encoder, Cinemartin Live, that comes with the unit, gives you the ability to record to a number of different codecs. There are presets built in for ProRes, ProRes 422, ProRes HQ, ProRes 444, etc. So plenty of choices for ProRes. But as well as ProRes, it will also encode to H.265. Now there's not many good H.265 encoders on the market right now. So having a built-in H.265 encoder allows you to create some very compact file sizes, but still retaining very good quality. And this application runs in the background. This is a background encoder. So while you're shooting, you could be shooting your lovely uncompressed HD or 4K, and as the files that you shoot go into the folder, a watch folder that's being watched by the Cinemartin Live software, as soon as it sees a new file, it'll start to encode it into the codec of your choice. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to do one of the things that's actually really neat about this, is I'm going to plug it into an external monitor. So I'm going to take my display port here, and I'm going to plug it in to an external HDMI monitor here. And this is a really useful thing to be able to do. Let's say you're traveling, I travel a lot, and you find yourself having to work out of a hotel bedroom, as I often do. Well, it means I can plug this into the TV set in the hotel bedroom. Most decent hotels these days will have a flat screen TV with HDMI. And I can expand the display beyond this smallish touchscreen display to a full 1920 by 1080 display on the hotel room TV or on any other HDMI TV. And that could actually even be a 4K screen. So you could have a very high resolution monitor. Now, once I'm plugged into here, it's actually much easier, instead of using the touchscreen capabilities, to use a traditional mouse and keyboard. So I have a Bluetooth mouse and a Bluetooth keyboard here that I've paired with the Bluetooth dongle on this. And as I say, you can get much, much smaller Bluetooth dongles than the one I'm using. So I can control this now with a keyboard and mouse, and that makes it much easier to use. So let's have a look at some of the other things that we could do with this unit. Well, for a start, on this particular unit, we have Adobe Premiere installed. And if I open Adobe Premiere, I have a project here called Alistair Test. And you'll see that this actually is the footage that I shot out in the countryside just the other day with the unit, lovely uncompressed HD footage. And I can edit this. And you can see that even though this is uh, uncompressed, it's actually really easy to edit and to drop clips into the timeline. So one of the things I could do with the unit if I was filming a news piece or a news story is on location, I could shoot my rushes, record them directly to the next device. So my footage is going to go directly onto this. And then without having to transcode, without having to copy or offload any material, I could edit directly using the device, using the Cinemartin Next. And then because I have an HDMI output and HDSDI output on the side here, as you can see, as I scroll through my footage, it's coming out of the HDSDI. So I wouldn't need to transcode or create a file to be able to feed from this unit to a satellite uplink truck a completed news story. So as I say, shoot directly onto the Cinemartin Next, edit directly on the Cinemartin Next, and then play out directly from this. So that would give you an incredibly fast turnaround because you're cutting out that whole offload and transcode process that's normally required with a laptop computer. Now I've come back to the built-in display for a moment. Now another thing I could do with this device if I was covering a breaking news story or something like that, and perhaps on this small screen editing is a little bit tricky, is of course I can use the Windows browser and I can go to my video clips and we'll find them here in my masters folder. And I could just select the files that I want to upload over FTP via the network connections on the, the device or via a plug-in Wi-Fi or 3G dongle to my broadcaster. 
I don't have to upload every single file that I've recorded. I can just take the clips that I want and just upload those. And of course, if I've used the background transcoder to make smaller files, my files are already nice and compact. H.265 is going to be fantastic for uploading to news stations and things like that because you can have really very high image quality in a very compact and very small file size. If you need to expand the storage beyond the 500 gigabytes or one terabyte of internal storage that comes with the unit, that's easy. You have those four USB 3 connectors on the side and you can plug in a USB 3 SSD, maybe something like this. This is a little um, Samsung drive here, solid state, incredibly fast, fast enough for uncompressed, very, very small, very compact, so no problem to carry with you when you're traveling. So really easy to add more recording space to the Next. So that's the Cinemartin Next. And this really is a lot more than just a video recorder because it is a very powerful and very capable computer. So it can do all of the things that you would normally do with a laptop, but it has the advantage that when you're shooting with it, the media is going straight onto the device. So you don't need to copy the files at all. Of course, if you do need to copy files, you can use the Next, use it as a DIT station for transcoding, for copying, moving files from one type of media to another, for live streaming, for uploading footage over the internet to cloud servers and things like that. So a very flexible, very versatile device. For more information, have a look at the Cinemartin website. Thank you for watching.